Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about why I switched from Travis CI to GitHub Actions. And there's a really good reason why I did this. I have a big problem in that I run a lot of CI and CD on all of my projects. And I actually hit the limit of what Travis CI has for free credit hours, or minutes rather. Uh, didn't know that they even had this when I signed up and that's a little frustrating. Uh, when a company says that it's completely free for public repositories, find out it's not. So. Let's go ahead and see why I'm switching. Uh, I've hit 10,170 of my 10,000 credit hours. It only took me about a year to do that of on and off development. And I hit that uh, at, in the first week of January. And so I was very confused how I had 10,000 hours in about a week because I assumed that maybe it would restart every year. Uh, come to find out that it is completely used up. And so it's time to move on to something that is actually free. There's no asterisk attached. And so let's see what the difference is between Travis CI and GitHub Actions. One of the big differences for me and one of the reasons that I have come to love GitHub Actions is it is very quick to come out with new versions of things. For instance, uh, Python 3.9 was released back in October of 2020. PHP 8 was released around that same time frame. And Travis actually took three or four months before those versions were available to test on their platform, which is crazy. That's three or four months of the inability to test your code on the brand new versions that come out, which is very problematic for a lot of people, uh, for me as well. I wanna make sure that my code runs on everything uh, that's the latest and the greatest, right? If somebody decides to use a newer version of software, I wanna make sure that it's compatible with it. And so GitHub Actions only took about a week or so for them to release those new versions of those languages to test against, whereas Travis took months before it was completely available to use. GitHub Actions, for the most part, is actually a lot quicker than Travis CI, I've noticed. For instance, on a macOS build, I can get macOS to spin up in just a few seconds, whereas Travis would often take a minute or two to actually get that going before it would run my code on that platform. Now, macOS is a much bigger... Uh, platform to spin up probably than Linux is, uh, but it shouldn't take that long when something like this uh, is meant for speed, is meant for uh, the ability for enterprise to run a lot of jobs concurrently. And so very frustrating to find that Travis was slowing me down a lot of the time where when I sat there and I waited for my jobs to finish, GitHub Actions very quickly jumps right in and actually lets me test my code. With GitHub Actions, everything is under one roof, which is awesome. You're already in there doing things like PRs, opening issues, uh, and pushing and pulling code. Why not also have your continuous integration and continuous delivery system built right in? Uh, that also helps speed up the process. So there's no actual external API call to another third-party system like with Travis, where you push your code to GitHub. It takes time to send that workflow over to Travis, build it, test it, and then send the results back to GitHub. It's all in-house, which means it's much quicker. So you push code and immediately it starts building and you can see the results right there on the actions tab, which is fantastic because I hate moving around to different places to see what's going on. Whereas I can stay in one place and know exactly what's happening with the build. One of the cons of GitHub Actions is that it is actually much more difficult to configure. I, I guess I wouldn't say difficult, but it is much more verbose. There's a lot more that goes into that YAML file that you have to set up before it will start running your jobs. And initially that was very frustrating for me to set up because it was a lot of extra lines of code that I needed to add. It was a lot of extra configuration, a lot of more thinking that I had to do as I set up these jobs. But what I found is that it's actually much nicer in the long run because the workflows are set up in a way that allows you to see exactly what's happening in steps. Uh, which Travis had a little bit of support for, but not a ton. And so with GitHub Actions, you can actually break down your jobs and see what step it's on. You can have matrices testing different versions, different platforms, right? Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, which Travis has as well. Um, but it's a little more complicated to set up, I think, on Travis than GitHub Actions. So let's go ahead and dive in and see an example of a YAML file and what they look like now versus what they looked like before. So here's an example of a YAML file for one of my Python projects. Uh, and something like this in a Travis YAML file probably would have been five, six, seven lines of code. And here we're looking at almost 40 lines of code. 
So it is quite a bit more, but you get much more powerful control over what you're actually doing here. So for instance, we give it a name, call it build. We tell it when to run this job. So on a push or a pull request, and then we go ahead and define our jobs. So I only have two jobs in this particular one. We lint the project. We tell it that it runs on the latest Ubuntu. And then we give it some steps, which is really cool. And I'll show you in a second. So first we actually pull the code in to uh, the container. We set up a Python environment with, and then you can give it a uh, matrice of versions or for linting, I only need one, the latest 3.9. Then we go ahead and install the project's dependencies and we run linting and it's that simple. Testing, very similar. We run it on Ubuntu latest. And then we give it a strategy of a matrix of a few different Python versions, which is really fantastic to test against to make sure your code actually runs on those. Similarly, we check out the repository, set up Python, install the dependencies, run the tests, and then we send uh, the test coverage to coveralls. And uh, yeah, it's it looks pretty simple once you actually start to read it. And once you figure it out, it's pretty straightforward to um, go ahead and mirror that across all of your different projects. And uh, now if we go look at this other one I've got, this is a release workflow. So when I tag my project, I wanna make sure that I actually release that to PyPy. And so very similarly, you can see here, we uh, set up Python, we install the build, we build a binary will, and then we actually go ahead and publish it to PyPy. So very straightforward reading it. It is a lot more lines to do it, but I feel that it's really great because if you come into the actual action here, it breaks it out for you into separate jobs. So you can see we've got our lint job here. And then this is where GitHub Actions, I feel, goes a little farther than uh, Travis does, is it breaks it out into these steps. And it's super easy in this GUI to um, just easily sift through what step you're on and see what actions were taken. So for instance, if we look up the setup Python here, we can see that it ran this particular action. We can break it down and see that it built um, a Python 3.9 environment for us. We can go into the run linting and see that it ran linting on these folders for us. Uh, and there was no errors, and so there's no uh, output for that, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can get really verbose. I've got some jobs that have maybe 12 different steps that they take, and there's half a dozen different jobs. And so very easily, you can kind of make sure that everything's in its place, super uh, organized, uh, and that you make sure that you check everything off of your box. For instance, I wanted to lint my project and test it against four versions. You could keep on adding to this and make it as verbose or as simple as you wanted. Well, that's a quick rundown on why I switched from Travis CI to GitHub Actions. To recap, it's much quicker. Uh, it's, it allows for much more control. Uh, it's completely free for public repos. For private repos, you actually get 3,000, uh, I believe it's minutes per month and that's the that's the key fact here is per month so every month it'll it'll reset for you so that you have another 3000 uh, minutes to test against private repos uh, and it's just built right in i mean i'm using github every single day might as well stay in the same place and uh and include that workflow in the tool that i'm already using if you like what you see make sure to subscribe to me we'll see you next time